Now we talk about the uh, data retrieval and first we talk about the protein uh, sequence retrievals and structures. Uh, protein data is of following types. Uh, there may be sequences. Those sequences may be the actual sequences um, from the proteomic data or some other experimental techniques or they can be the translated sequences. So sometimes uh, we go to nucleotide databases, we get those nucleotides and translate them by using some software. So these are kind of predicted protein sequences. Uh, we can also make structures from those proteins. Uh, they may be predicted or they may be the real structures um, com coming from different X-ray crystallography techniques. And sometimes uh, we are interested in the functions of the proteins, so those are stored as annotations. Now, as far as the resources are concerned, there are multiple resources for protein sequences, uh, but Uniprot is uh, claims to be the biggest and integrated resource, uh, whereas uh, for the structures, PDB seems like a good resource. So here is the page for data retrieval from Uniprot. So we want to search favorite protein P53. So we put P53 in the search box. Uh, we check this search button right here, and then we get output. So here we see that there are our 18,000 different records. So it's showing us the first 25 out of them right here. We can have different columns of the output on this web page. So we can have entry, it's ID. We can have entry name. So the, the uh, suffix human is written. So it's coming from human. So it can be coming from mouse. It can be coming from rat and Arabidopsis. So protein name is cellular tumor antigen. So next column is uh, gene name TP53. So this gene is known as TP53 stands for tumor protein, obviously from human. And in the end, we have its length. That is, it's 393 base pairs. So let's check this first one. So here we reach the record for this protein. Um, that is cellular tumor pro antigen protein 53, uh, commonly known as TP53. Uh, we can have uh, different tabs showing us its uh, outputs. We can look into functions. We can look into its taxonomy and lot many other uh, characteristics. So if we look into the function, so it's, it gives us some description about what it's doing. If we scroll down, we can move on to the bottom part where we can see that we have something written as feature key. So it's written as site here. So there are some unique sites in different proteins which are uh, having some specific properties in them. So uh, this is uh, just one amino acid uh, present in this protein that interacts with the DNA. Same way, um, there are different metal binding sites. So mainly it's uh, binding to zinc metal and those sites are their amino acids are shown here, the number of amino acids. Uh, so these are the regions from which uh, it interacts with the metals. Uh, down below, we can also see the DNA binding region. For example, here, uh, amino acid 102 to 292, and that is shown as a graphical view here also. Go molecular functions, go are gene ontologies. So gene ontologies are uh, different functional annotation terms. So they define different functions. So among us them, we have molecular functions, we have biological processes, and we have uh, cellular components. So here we just see uh, molecular functions. So it tells us that it performs these, these, these kind of functions. So mainly it's uh, ATP binding. Uh, it's uh, P53 binding here, which is exhibited in this protein. And there are other functions, so kind of like DNA binding. So all those functions related to these proteins, uh, they are shown here in these this heading go molecular functions. Next, we move on to some other functions. So in the biological process categories, we see that it is related to apoptosis. Normally, uh, apoptosis is the cell death. So uh, and then obviously, it's related to cell cycle and some other components. So and then in the down part, we see there are some enzymes and pathway databases. So uh, the reactome is a database in which we have a uh, group of reactions which are categorized. So these are the list of those reactions with which it is related. So we move further until we reach its taxonomy. On the top part, we see there is something written as uh, protein family or group database is TCDB. 
uh, basically there is as another classification in which the proteins are classified on the basis of as being a transporter proteins so associated with transportations across the membranes and then there is a five digit number so that is specific classification code which is given to each protein so this protein has actually this code so then we have the names and taxonomy so protein names are there and then the taxonomy of the individual the classification of the individual from which it is coming is uh, can be seen from here let's see how do we reach to its sequence so that will be till very last so you you scroll down until you reach in the end uh, you find those sequences so here it says uh, isoform isoform 1 so different proteins have different isoforms uh, different alternative splice variants so this is isoform 1 as you can see it is also exhibited in its name so it's p046371 so it's uh, kind of the first isoform which is uh, down below we can see its sequence starting from methionine uh, which is always a uh, first amino acid in those proteins and then ending at the 393 amino acid so it's a it's a 393 amino acid long protein the sequence is right here uh, you can click on to fast a button at the top and then you can get this output in fast a format so we'll look into fast a format few sections below so we can also get the same protein from ncbi and in ncbi obviously uh, this sequence is pretty similar and the arrangement is slightly different so it says origin where the sequence starts and then sequence ends at those two slashes so we can get it from ncbi also so it's present where its gene is there pdb gives us the structures so we can go to pdb and we can search for the same id p04637 and then it gives us the sections or the regions from which it can make up some specific structures so these are the uh, turns here and the black ones are where uh, we have the empty lines uh, and no secondary structure can can be formed blues uh, they show those bands right here and this uh, orange region um, is designating the alpha helix regions so in pdb we can have the structures in in this format as well as we can have the 3d structures they look like this so you can get those fancy structures you can play with them and you can output into your nice and fancy figures so we conclude that uniport is the biggest resource for uh, which is actually integrated between uh, integrated resource between pir ebi and swiss institute of bioinformatics and PDB is the good resource to get the protein structures.